Come on, why don't you stand to your feet and at your house right now. We're just going to have a good time in the house of the Lord. And I know that the Holy Spirit is going to invade into your house this morning. That the Holy Spirit is going to have his way in this service. You guys stand and worship with us. Come on. you're doing right now at your house. Maybe you got a cup of coffee in your hand. Go ahead and sit it down. Maybe you're listening on the radio. Go ahead and turn the knob up a little bit. Begin to clap your hands. Stomp your feet. Get your children involved. I'm ready to do this thing. Come on, help me sing. Move the mountains. Told the wind and waves. Told the winds and waves be still. Cast out Cast demons. Out demons. With the empty soul. With the empty soul. Be now there's freedom. Now there's freedom. Now there's freedom. Now there's freedom in your name. You gave us power. And the keys to do the whole redemption. The whole redemption. Made accusers. Made accusers of the soul. Show us mercy with your mind, with your mighty miracle. Now there's breakthrough, now there's freedom, now there's freedom in your name. You gave us power, gave us power. and the keys, and the keys to do the same. Now we proclaim Jesus' name. Jesus. 
somebody help me say We walk in your victory We stand in authority Come on, say it All for your glory For your glory, Lord For your glory, Lord Come on, help me say We stand in your victory Come on.
on, let's give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. As long as you can do better than that. You can do better than that. It doesn't matter if there's only two or three, you can do better than that. Even while you're home right now, you can do better than that. Be blessed to be thank you. Listen, just because we're not assembling in the building today doesn't mean that the church is closed. The building itself may be closed, but the church is still open. But at this time, we want to switch up just a little bit and go into the offering part of the service. Those of you that are home and you're looking on right now, there is a way that you can give even while home. Basically, you just break out your cell phone and text 84321 in the amount. So two would be 84321 in the amount that you're given is pretty easy to do. If you're not with the whole cell phone giving, log on to our website, www.newimagechurch.com. Click on the donate tab. You can give there. You can give via PayPal. Um, if you're old school and you don't like any of that technology and stuff, you are more than welcome to write your check out and mail it to the church. The address can be found on the website as well, but you mail that check. Miss Shirley will be here tomorrow and in the next couple of days just checking the mail. So. Make sure, just, just continue to give your tithe and offering, and let's continue to operate as if nothing's happening in the world right now. Stay with us. God has a word for you, and we ask that you just be in prayer with the praise team as we continue to exalt God on today. Amen. Amen. You never lost a battle. No, you never lost a battle. 
believe that, just stand where you're right now and just say, that you can do You never lost a battle, no, no, you never lost a battle. And I know, I know, you never say, I know, I know, I know, never. You one more time, full of faith, full of confidence, say, I know, I know, you never live. Hallelujah, do you believe that? Do you believe it with all your heart? Father, we just bless your name. Father, we bless you. We bless you. We thank you. We know that you're capable of all things. Yes, you are, God. There's nothing that you can't do. I love that song. It said, nothing's too big for my God. No, 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 no. Nothing's too big. Nothing's too big. No sickness. Pain, no cancer. No. No broken relationship that you go through is too big for my God. No, no. Father, we trust in you. God, we see and we feel the storms raging all around. right now where you're sitting where you're standing if you're on the road just if you can lift your hands just give him some exaltation just glorify him for who he is God I feel your spirit in this place this morning God and I know that your spirit is invading homes right now God and I know that your spirit is invading the radio waves right now God and we just trust in you Lord yes Lord every step we take Every move we make Oh, Lord We're still able To do abundant things To exceed our expectations, Lord You're still able, you're still able
grace abounds. Your grace abounds in deepest glory. Your sovereign hand. Your sovereign hand. Will be my God. Will be my God. Will feed me fail. Will feed me fail and fear surround. You never fail. You never fail. You won't start now. You won't start now.
in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is with my In the presence of I will my fear no evil. You're with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Yeah. All my days, I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Take me deeper than my feet. Yeah. He who dwells in the secret place. Born again, I've been born again. 
to your family. Your blood flows through my. If you believe it, I want you to sing it loud. And I'm no longer a slave to fear. Give him some praise. 
from yes. heaven and will forgive their sins and will yeah. heal their land this isn't even anything to do with my, my, my sermon but I need you believers to hear this there's a process to this healing if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face turn from their wicked ways then I'll hear there's a process to it but the enemy himself wants us to believe because he thinks he's closed the church that he won but as I was sitting over there this morning and listening to you guys sing and, and just feeling the presence of God in this building because he's here right now it doesn't take two, three, four hundred people it only takes two or three gathered in his name and he shall be in the midst he's here right now and I feel his presence in this building I know you feel him at home as well but he said something to me when I was sitting there Pastor Blake he said, you made the enemy mad. I said, who are you talking to? He said, everyone that's going on with life and doing it without fear. He said, you made the enemy mad because the enemy expects us to bow down right now. But when we can come into the house of the Lord and when we can sit at home and we can lift our hands and worship the name of our Father, the enemy's mad. So we bless God in this building today. We bless him at your home. We bless him in your car. I don't care where you are right now. Just give God some praise for he is worthy of all our praise. 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 He is worthy. I say often, praise team, we thank you. We thank you guys. You may take your seat. Musicians, if you choose to leave the stage please don't go far because I'm going to need you uh, here in a second Pastor Blake I can't thank you enough for you sacrificing half of your day yesterday to come and set this up Ms. Jackie can't thank you enough for being a, a helping hand wherever needed I can't thank you enough those of you that are home right now can't thank you enough for joining us Praise team members, those of you that are working with sound. Those just I, I can't thank you guys enough because fear could have been enough to stop you. But you're here today and you're wanting to be here, not necessarily to disobey any orders, but you're here to help spread the gospel. So we're grateful. Listen, I, I, only a few of you I, I've spoken to about this, and, and it is a blessing. We welcome you. Again, Pastor Blake's already welcomed you, but those of you that are home, I especially welcome you right now. Because God spoke something to me even before this transformation this took place and all of this happened. He spoke something to me. He said, I want you to love on the internet community. And Pastor Blake, it wasn't until a couple days ago that I was understanding. I, I, I know the plan that he's given me and I'm supposed to introduce it. I thought I was supposed to introduce it to the team that on the first Sunday in April. But God said, I've got a plan. He said, I want you to love on the internet community because there's a lot of people that want to be here but can't be here. I got folks from the coast that, that would die to be here every week but can't be here. But they watch. They watch so that it can be a part of service. So in saying that, something that I, I'm pretty sure I spoke to Pastor Blake and some of you about, that we're getting ready to really make our internet church larger yes. than we'll ever imagine. Yes. And we're going to love on them and we're going we're gonna to appreciate them and we're going to just, just continue to help them grow because I believe in my heart that our internet church can be just as big, if right. not bigger, than our physical church. 
So what better way than to kick off this internet church than to make the people have to stay home today? <laughs> well, they got to be a part of it. So, so in saying that, one of my visions for this internet church is, it won't happen this year, but it'll be next year. One, one weekend, we're going to call it just an all, like our regular all-star weekend. But in this particular weekend, we want everyone, I don't care if you're a member from California, we want you to plan a year in advance to come out to the house on that weekend. We're going to party all weekend long. All weekend long. We're going to bring our ministers. We're going to bring our folks. We're just going to bring everyone together. We're going to party all weekend long. And that, if nothing else, that can be those that can't be here. That can be their one service or one week in a year. So I'm believing, God, that this is just the beginning of the internet church and what we're doing right now is setting up for the internet church and I am grateful so we welcome you new image church internet community those that usually are here but can't be here we welcome you today uh, this morning I was spending time with God Pastor Blake and well actually yesterday I was thinking about okay I'm gonna throw on a sweatsuit tomorrow and I'm about to just slap on a hat and I was convicted God said, I want you to come into my house tomorrow and operate as if it's regular service. Come on. He said, I don't want you shortchanging the people on the word. I don't want you doing none of that. So I was just spending time with him and just listening to him and thinking about all the people that are complaining right now about this, that, and the other. And I had to sit there and realize I can't find no fault in him right now. I can't find no fault in God right now. I don't care what's going on. I can't find no fault. He is still God and he's perfect in all of his ways we bless him we thank him uh, uh those if you would turn to deuteronomy the 28th chapter i'm going to read this and then we're going to jump into this word those of you that are joining us please uh join along and and, and we're going to read this but before i forget when i'm done with this sermon uh hopefully we'll have enough time and i'll remember we've got a special announcement that miss jackie's going to come and give to you we're going to do it at the conclusion of this service so those of you that listen online if you log off early you won't hear the special announcement that's all i'm saying so make sure that you stick around deuteronomy the 28th chapter beginning at verse number one deuteronomy 28 and one the bible says if you fully obey the lord your god and carefully follow all his commands I give you today, I give you today, I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on the earth. All the blessings will come on you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. And verse 3, we're just going to read the first part. You will be blessed in the city. You will be blessed in the city. We thank you. For the reading of his word you know, one of the things that i enjoy doing um and working at church and, um it was something i recently had to stop doing because there's a lot that's going on right now was driving the van man you hear some things driving that van i promise you you hear and see some things but this one particular time this 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 young lady we her and her sister got on and she sneezed she can't sneeze now like that and get away with it. She sneezed right now and get away with it. I mean, and, and people are going to think something's wrong, but she sneezed. And before she finished sneezing, she stopped and she said, bless me. So Keisha and I looked at each other and we started laughing because we're thinking like, darn, she didn't even give us a chance to bless her. She made sure she got her own blessing. Why is that important? Because sometimes you can't wait for someone else. You got to speak it to yourself. And I'm believing in my heart that in this situation that we're going through right now, uh, uh, we often talk about generational curses. I heard some on the radio even calling this a, a curse and, and, and relating it to things of the past. But if you read Deuteronomy 28, it not only talks about generational curses, it also talks about generational blessings. And I believe in my heart that the church have gotten so spiritual that all we focus on is the generational curses. When in all reality, we have the power to speak on the generational blessings. And depending on who you are and where you're at in, in, in God, I know the Bible tells me that power of life and death is in the tongue. 
So it's up to me. I'm either speaking a funeral or I'm speaking into my future. And I believe and I'm blessed because this young lady here had enough sense to speak her own blessing. Bless me. Sometimes you got to get to that place in your life where you're just saying, bless me. In spite of what you got going on, you got to begin to speak those things. And she had enough sense. In the simplest term, when I did some research on the word blessing, in the simplest term, a blessing is God's favor and protection. You hear me again? In the simplest term, a blessing is God's favor and his protection. So this young lady name is Natalie, who I was speaking of. Natalie had enough sense to declare blessings over myself. What did she do when she declared blessing over herself? What she was saying is, I have favor of God and I am protected by God. She was smart enough. I don't know, eight years old, whatever, 10, 30, I don't know how old she is. But she had enough sense to say, bless me. So she was declaring a blessing over her, God's protection. Right now, while we're going through what we're going through, it's up to you to declare a blessing over your own house. There's many that are wanting around, wanting to, you know, anoint the doorpost and all that stuff. I'm not knocking that. Don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking that. But I got a different method that I use. I speak those things over my house. And I tell the devil he can't come in. And I begin to speak those things which be not as though they were. I speak total healing. I speak total deliverance. You have the power to speak those things. Blessing, favor, God's protection. We have blessing all jacked up nowadays. Nowadays, blessing to us uh, is what we drive. Nowadays, blessing to us is how big our house is. Nowadays, a blessing to us is how much money that's in the bank. That's what a blessing is to most of us now. But that's not really a blessing. According to the scripture, according to the definition of the word, a blessing in itself can be simply coming in contact with someone that may have this virus and you yourself not receiving it. That is a blessing because there's a hedge a protection around you. So stop saying because I drive a nice car, I'm blessed. Or because I wear nice clothes, I'm blessed. Because if you and your family are able to walk through the midst of this virus and not get it, you are blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. I can't say that enough. You are blessed. People sitting right now don't have food in the freezer. And you may not have food, but you've got money to purchase food. You're blessed. There's some right now that, 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 that actually and truly are, are caught up in, you're not caught up in anything. You're blessed. Now, I got to take a break real quick. I, I, I see we have some, a, a few care pastors and I believe there's some anointing in this house. What I need y'all to do throughout the course of this sermon is I don't need you to just sit and watch. I need you going around this building declaring the blessings of God around this building. See, what's funny is, some, I remember back in the day, my mom would send us away for a day or two. And when she would send us away for a day or two, she would do her spring cleaning. She couldn't do her cleaning when the kids were there because the quicker she cleaned, the more we messed up. So when she sent us to grandma's house for the night, we come back the next day, things that were in our room that shouldn't be in our room were gone. Things that my dad had that shouldn't be, they were gone. So mama waited until the house was clear and there weren't many people there to clean up. I believe that God wants us to clean up. There's things that are present in the house that shouldn't be in the house. And God wants us to clean it up. So my care pastors that are here today, those of you that are anointed and you know God's anointings on your life, I need you moving around this building, section by section. Declaring the blessings of God in this house. You that are home right now that are watching on. Declaring the blessings that are on your house. You have the power to speak. If Natalie can speak a blessing, you yourself can speak a blessing. Why are you blessed also? There are churches right now that are closed. Have no means of technology to spread God's word. And look what we have. You that are home right now, you're looking at me as if you're sitting here right now. You are blessed because even though your church doors, the building may be closed because of the orders of the governor. You're still able to receive a word, not from T.D. Jakes, not from, from, from Nick Rod Parsley, not from any of this. You're able to receive a word and worship from your church.
You're blessed because God has made a way for you. I looked at the word bless. And Keto, when I looked up the word blessing, and it was a last minute thing, so you don't have the scripture, we're not worried about it. The first time the word blessing was mentioned was in the book of Genesis. Genesis 1 and 22 to be exact. Genesis 1 22 said, God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the waters in the sea and let the birds increase on the earth. In this passage, to be blessed means I'm fruitful and I'm multiplying. Again, in this passage, it means I'm fruitful and I am multiplying. I'm speaking over every believer that's present, every believer that's listening on. You're blessed. Why are you blessed? Because in the midst of this famine that we're going through right now, your house will not go lacking. You will not need of anything. And what you have, God will multiply and give that much more unto you. I speak blessings over your home. I speak blessings. New Image Church, God said, I had to make room for the season that you're in. I had to make room. Some of you have lost some things at home. He had to make room. Why is he making room? He's making room for the multiplication that's getting ready to happen. You're entering the season where he's taking something small and multiplying into something bigger. Oh, I feel God's presence right now. Everything that was stagnant in your life now is getting ready to come and come back with full vengeance. God said, I'm giving you the power in this season to multiply your little sacrifice. I'm getting ready to do it for you. Some were looking at me like I was crazy last week when I said what I said in regards to fit for a king. And I asked for a thousand dollars from some and this from some and that from some. What blew my mind was more elderly folks that's on fixed income that I never expected to try to sow a seed of, of one thousand dollars were reaching out to me saying, trying to figure out a way if they can do it in installments. Because they believe in this house. They believe in the word that is spoken of this house. And they know if I give 1,000, God will turn around and multiply that and so much more. He's doing it for us right now and we don't even understand. Everything he puts in your hand in this season is getting ready to multiply. I got two words for you real quick. And this is the subject for today. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Whatever you have in your possession, God's going to multiply it if you are obedient to what he says. The next time the word is mentioned is in Genesis 1.28. Genesis 1.28 says, God bless them. God bless them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in numbers. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea, in the sea, and the birds in the sky, and over every living creature that moves on the ground. The Bible says, and God bless them, and God bless them, and God bless them. Not just one, but all of them. Not just, he blessed them all. I have two words for you yet again. Bless you. Those that are here right now, bless you. Those that are looking on, bless you. God's blessing is upon this house right now, and he's getting ready to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can actually think, just because of your connection to this house. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. The blessing itself isn't just a, a, a formula. What I mean by that? But this formula itself and what it is means those that are connected to you are getting ready to be blessed. So in other words, my son may not even be in the place where he needs to be. But because he carries my name and he's connected to me. When the Bible says bless them, he's not only speaking to me, but he's speaking to anyone that's connected to me. Now, I had a word spoken into my life uh, two weeks ago. A man of God called and left. A, he actually recorded a message and sent it to me. And he was telling me how God said, you're entering into a season of abundance. Now, God has blessed and God has elevated and God has placed me in a place where now, thank God that uh, I, I am the senior pastor of this church. What I mean by that, and don't get that wrong, what I'm saying. What I mean by that, if I am the senior pastor of this church, and abundant blessing is spoken over me. There's no way for an abundant blessing to be spoken over me and then not apply to the believers that are connected. So there's some of you right now that's getting ready to receive all because you're connected because the Bible says bless them. 
you're getting ready to receive and you ain't did nothing for it other than right connections. So I believe God's getting ready to do something great. So again, he says, bless them. He begins to speak on the blessing. Those that are watching now online, bless you. Bless you. Where you're at right now, bless you. It, it, count it not strange that your home with your family, your son and your daughter may not ever step foot in the church. But because you're home right now, you're able to watch service. And they're watching it with you. Bless you. Bless them. Bless your house. Bless your family. What I like about this is, in those two passages, I got to point something out and I'm moving. The Bible says God blessed them. Then he spoke to them. He blessed them. Then he spoke. He entered in and said, bless you. Then he spoke to them. So what am I trying to tell you? Whatever he has already spoken, has already been activated. So if he comes up and he tells Brittany, he says to Brittany that your entire house is blessed and I'm getting ready to raise up a nation in you and everything that you went lacking in your life is getting ready to be multiplied 10 times, 100 times, 30, whatever. And he begins to speak and says, your son is blessed, your daughter is blessed. Guess what? Brittany does not have to wait on the manifestation. God does it, then he tells you of it. So if God is speaking right now and telling you that I'm getting ready to do something great in your life, you don't have to wait until it happens. In all reality, you should start giving praises the moment he speaks of why. Because he has already activated the blessing in your life. Let me point this out. Let me go a little deeper real quick. Again, this right here. Uh, I, 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 normally I would come with some strong word of revelation. But about 4.35 o'clock this morning, God said, no. No deep revelation today. He said, I want you to confirm what I've already spoken in their lives. He's getting ready to do it. I don't care what it looks like right now. You be obedient and watch and see what God does. Watch and see. Both of these uh, uh, verses got multiplications. Both of them talk about how God multiplied. The anim animals themselves in the first one multiplied, but they didn't have something that the second verse had. The Bible says in the second that they multiplied and they were given something. Let me, let me, let me, let me, I need you to really pay attention to this. So both, ver the, the, verse 21 and verse 28, verse 22, whatever it was, and 28, he spoke a blessing on them. He told them all to be fruitful and multiply. But it was the latter verse that received something that the first verse didn't receive. The latter verse was not only given the spirit and the power to multiply, but they also was given the power of authority. Some of you ain't going to catch that. You that are home right now, Miss Shirley, I'm looking at you. Miss Pat, I'm looking at you. You that are home right now, he said, not only have I given you the power to multiply, but I've given you the authority over everything that's in your life. That, that just went too deep for some. What you mean by that? The birds created birds the horses created horses horses the the, the 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 every animal created another animal but all those animals became was an animal but in the latter verse he created multiply he said let's make man in our image and not only make man in our image let's give him the power to name all the other animals okay here's your shout for some of you that can't catch this don't get weary and well-doing, new image, because this is due season. Notice this. The first blessing was a blessing, but the second was a blessing plus the authority. There's many that's been blessed before you, but they don't have the authority or the power. God has given you, because he's made you, Tiffany, in his image, he's given you the power over every living thing. So if I've got the power over every living thing, they speak of this virus and how it's a living virus and how it's going from door to door. So if he's given me power over everything, does this virus have more power than me? No. I have the power over this virus, and I'm not to be fearful of this virus. For God did not give me the spirit of fear, 
The enemy wants to mess with you, but he's giving you authority. Don't get wary in well-doing because I've saved the best for last new image. I'm thinking about the story with the, uh, uh, I, I got to make reference to it twice. I'm thinking about the story with the, uh, 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 the bring back the wine sermon. The, 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 the governor looks and says, everyone usually puts out the best wine first. But you saved the best for last. God, this morning God told me to tell New Image, I saved the best for last. There were many that received what you thought was yours, but he said, no, I've given them a blessing, but I've given you authority. I've given you the power to speak those things which be not as though they were. I've given you something that the first did not get. So, so uh, uh, I, I, I had to set that up to show you something. Deuteronomy 28 is where we're at. It speaks of blessings. But the thing about this blessing in verse 1 says, If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands. Not everyone can receive the blessing that's on this house. Even if you're fakely connected. What do you mean by that? There's some that didn't have two words to say to me since I've been here three years. Now all of a sudden God's speaking to you and telling you things about me? Oh yeah. Some, would, some walked by me many years, not say a word and had some negative things to say. Now all of a sudden God's ordaining you to bless me? Oh yeah. I ain't dumb. I know what that is. Some are trying to get connected for the wrong reason. Now, when I spoke those blessings over that house, I said, you got to be connected. There's some that are fakely connected that won't receive. Why? Because in the first verse, it says, if you fully obey the Lord your God and careful, follow all of his commands, I will give to you. I will give you today. I don't care if you fake, you falsely connected. If you're not obeying his word, you won't receive. You got to obey God's word more than anything else. And the enemy himself tries to play with us and tells us that, no, nah, you ain't got to do this. You ain't got to do that. But you got to be obedient to God's word. It says right here in Deuteronomy 28, if you fully obey the Lord your God, fully, not partially, not when it's convenient, not when I'm needing something, but if you will fully obey the Lord your God. And it doesn't stop there. And carefully follow all of his commands. Now in the New Testament, he gives us commandments. And the commandments in the New Testament is so powerful. It's to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your love. So basically you got to love God with everything. And he says love your neighbor with everything. Now, it don't even matter if you dot your I's and cross all your T's and you obey every voice that's spoken in this house, if you don't like your sister or your brother, you're out of line. I don't care if that sister or that brother did you wrong, you're out of line. If they're not moving the way you like, the, you like for them to move, and because of that you speak bad of them or you try to turn people against them, you're out of line. And the sad part is there's many gifted people in the church right now that's very gifted, that won't receive a blessing from God because you can't keep all of his commands. Again, I'm not even in the Old Testament where there was a lot. I'm in the New Testament with a two. Love the Lord your God with everything and love your brothers and your sister. Love your neighbor. Now, it's so easy for me to love, uh, you know, my son, even though he get on my nerves sometimes. I want to knock him out. It's so easy for me to love my fiance. She get on my nerve too sometimes. I can't look over there because she might look at me crazy. So easy for me to love those that have been with me for a long time. But what about the ones that have wronged me? The ones that tried to destroy me. 
the ones that try to tear me down, the ones that try to do whatever they I'm still commanded to love. It is still my duty to love them. And if I can't love them and do what, if I can't keep the commandments of loving them, I can't receive the blessings of God. That's crazy. Why, why are you saying it like that? Uh, uh, again, the, the top, the, the very first part speaks of blessings. I, I can think of some times where blessings resulted in, uh, 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 where sacrifices resulted in blessings. There was a little boy and there was a multitude and you know, the people were hungry. And the disciple ran up and said, you got all these people here, they're hungry. He actually said, is there not food here? He said, there's one little boy that's got a fish snack, a two-piece fish snack. He said, go get that fish snack. How are you going to get two fish or five loaves of bread and feed a multitude? But he told him, he said, go and get it. And he was obedient. He went and got it. And he brought it back to God. And the Bible said that God gave thanks. And he began to multiply. It was obedience that brought forth that blessing the woman that we spoke of a few weeks ago who was getting ready to having to get rid of her kids because she was in debt he told her to go and do this and go and do that and she did it and it was obedience that brought forth a blessing again going back to that story with the uh, uh talking about the uh, uh the wine when mary came to jesus she told him she said we got a problem there ain't no wine here to drink y'all know what it is to party without wine it ain't the same. He said, there's a problem here. We ain't got no wine. He looked at her. He said, woman, why are you bothering me? My time has not come yet. Why? She looked at him and said, whatever he tells you to do, you do it. Her obedience, uh, the, the, the obedience of the servant brought forth the wine. What am I telling you? It's obedience. I'm reminded of another story, and this is my final, and we're getting ready to tie this thing together. There was a woman, and her and her son were preparing their final meal. There was a famine in the land, preparing their final meal for death. And God told the, the prophet, showed up, and the prophet said, go ahead and make me a cake. She said, how am I going to make you a cake, and I'm preparing to die? I don't have anything now to feed my family. You're getting ready to take my last? She says to him, she says, uh, he says to her, make me a cake. He said, you do this, your meal barrel will never go empty. This is what I like, Pastor Lee. He said, your meal barrel will never go empty. Now, in the second story, the woman with the, 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 the oil, she was blessed with abundance. Her cup overflowed. But in this other story, it never speaks of her being blessed with abundance. But she was sacrificed. She sacrificed. And the Bible says every time she reached in to get some meal, God had supplied. So in other words, every time she reached back to get, God pulled a little bit in her hand. I'm just trying to tell you right now, your sacrifice brings forth a blessing. It brings forth a blessing. This week has been a, a slower week. At the shop, a little bit slower. And the enemy started messing with me. He said, you now pledged to give a $1,000. And look what God did to you. Y'all know how it works. And I'm sitting there thinking like, well, maybe you're right. Maybe I didn't hear God clear. <laughs> maybe he was meaning $100. You know how you start to rationalize in your mind. And I thought about it. I said, you know what? I don't care if we don't have. The Livingston family is going to sacrifice that thousand dollars to be a blessing to the house. So I made that declaration on Wednesday. On Wednesday, made that declaration. Even told my employee on Wednesday, don't even worry about coming in. Now I haven't been worrying all week, but I've been enjoying the time that I had down because I've been running and doing a lot, and I needed that time. So I told her, don't come in on Wednesday. I came into the shop, Tiffany, and. Didn't even turn on the open sign. Said, I'm not even opening up today. All week the phone's not ringing, nothing's happening. But I got in there on Wednesday, the phone started ringing. 
This is the same day I declared, God, I'm going to do what I have to do. A couple more people showed up, so I called her up Wednesday. I said, I said, come on in Thursday. I got some things for you. Got to the shop Thursday morning, same thing. I'm not turning on the open sign. But I am going to sacrifice and give God what I told him I'm going to give. Folks started calling. And folks started dropping by. I can't tell you how many restaurant owners came in and said, can you make me a banner? I need a banner that says, take out curbside service because the restaurants can't have people in the building. God will take what's a curse to some and use it to be a blessing to you. I started making those and making this and making that before I knew it. God had blessed financially in one day more than I had done all month. If you are obedient, he'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. But you gotta be obedient. Again, there's many that won't do because you can't see your way out. If you can see your way out, that's not faith. I'm speaking to you that are home right now that's going through. Trust God. Because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, they used to sing a song that said, I done tried him and he's all right. So I have a try in Jesus. I tried Jesus. Not only in this family, but in many other times. And he has never failed me. He's always came to my, my occasion and rose to the occasion and given me what I need. And he has no respectable person. If God will do it to someone like me, He'll do it for you also. Don't you give up. Don't you throw in the towel. You keep pushing. God will make a way out of no way. I, I, God, I feel your presence. Now that, oh God, I hear you. Be obedient. It is in these downtime right now that millionaires are made. God, I hear you. It's usually at times like this where you see a need that a person with the right mindset goes and finds and fulfills that need. And they become millionaires because they're obedient to a voice that they hear. God, I hear you. So what am I telling you right now? Finish your book. You got time now. Start your book. You got time now. Tell someone your story. You got time now. God, I hear you. Fill out the application to go back to school. You got time now. Now that you're slow on your job, start searching for the job that God has promised you. Your excuse has been, I've been too busy. You ain't got that excuse now. God has a way of slowing down the earth so that he can open up heaven wow, that's good. he said I'm slowing down earth and Pastor Lee I'm opening up heaven and I need you to be obedient finish the book start the book fill out the job application fill out the school application go apply for the new home that you got time now go apply for the car you got time now stop making excuses go and do it right now oh god go and do it right now go and do it right now don't wait until tomorrow when you get home get on the computer get on your phone start doing it why because the time is now in due season it is now receive it receive it receive it oh god i hear you certify i'm speaking this over this house certify your nonprofit now and i'm speaking to some woman that's here not not only but some woman that is here god gave you a love for women because of what you've been through he's given you a vision stop making excuses the time is now the time is now the time is now you can help someone by telling them what you've been through 
and you can easily say I've been through it look at me now the time is now the earth has stopped but heaven is open the earth has stopped but heaven is open whatever he tells you to do do it not next week not next year do it right now today do it do it do it do it do it he says he says in this verse if you obey the lord your god care for follow his commandment i would give to you this that i give to you this day oh god let me back up you will fully obey the lord your god and carefully follow all his commands i give you today everything that was just said if you do it today the Lord your God will set you high above all nations on earth oh I like that some of you ain't caught that I'm speaking prophetically to you that are listening you that are looking and you that are present he says the Bible says the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on the earth. Now some may not catch that, but I'm speaking to two or three of you that have an ear to hear God. This is your season of promotion. This is your season of promotion. This is your season of promotion. Let me, let me help because someone still not catch. The Bible says I will set you high above all nations. I will set you high above Tiffany if I'm walking hand in hand with someone and, 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 and God says Mark I'm going to set you high above that means he's taking me up I don't care who's been blessed before you I'm taking you up in this season this is a season of promotion oh God this is a season of promotion God I hear Pastor Eric and I were able to spend some time Friday morning. And oh my God, it was good. I'm telling you, when we get together, it's like having two high school kids. And ain't no telling what's going to come out of our mouth and what's going to happen next. But he stopped by and we hung out for about an hour. And he was asking questions about the store and I was telling him. When we came to New Image, I sold my other store went to Powersville to be with him as a partner with the expectation of him retiring that year that was three years ago Alicia he did not retire he continued to drag it out finally this year he said Mark I'm done I'm retiring I'm tired da, 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 da. okay I've heard that before so he came to me mid-February show you how God works he said I'm ready to retire I'm like well I done waited a little bit late. The church itself has asked me to be senior pastor. He said, well, Mark, if, if I can't give this to you, I'll have to sell it to someone else. He said, what if I make you a deal you can't refuse? It would have to be a good deal, John, because I'm stretched thin now. He laid out some terms and when he laid out the terms, I'm like, man, oh, Joey, I couldn't refuse it. And I got your name right. Look at God. I couldn't refuse it. So this was in Mar this was in February. He showed back up, Pastor Blake, a few weeks later. He said, uh, Mark, he said, I think Monday's going to be my last day. I'm like, hold on, hold on. We hadn't discussed anything yet. He said, I'll tell you what, go ahead and get a feel for it. He said, I'll draw up the contracts. I'm like, okay, cool. He, he came and he drew up the contracts and he brought the contract to me. And he gave it to me and I'm looking at the contract and I'm like, we didn't discuss this. We didn't discuss this. We didn't discuss this. We didn't discuss this. We didn't discuss none of this. But what I was saying to myself that we didn't discuss was a favor of God. Because he was selling it to me for one price he wind up taking another forty thousand dollars off he was only selling certain parts and certain equipment he wound up selling everything 
On top of that, originally he wanted a down payment. He wound up saying, I don't need nothing down. And whenever you're ready to start paying me, you start paying me. And on top of that, he says, I'm willing to work for you whenever you need me. So, so, so what, what happened? God came in and did the impossible. Every day he stops by and he looks at me and he just smiles and he asks, do I need help? And I find things for him to do. And he's so happy right now. And he looked at me and he said, I'm happy because I know that my dream will live in you. This is promotion season and if God is promoting your pastor listen let me make it clearer than that we're getting married in July if God is promoting me he's automatically promoting them because as I grow, they're gonna grow. We were talking yesterday and she was jokingly saying something and I was saying something about Kat and hours and she, y'all, those of you that know her well, she's sweet. Oh, but she quick too. She real quick, well I'm telling you. She looked at me, what that got to do with you? And I had to explain to her, our finances are coming together as one. So you ain't got to worry about what you don't have. God going to see to it that one of us is strong in that area. This is promotion season. Season, season. All right, all right, next thing real quick, real quick, real quick. I'm wrapping up. Verse 2 says, all the blessing will come on you. All the blessing. All the blessings all of the blessings will come on you now, oh y'all ain't trying to you that are home right now you ain't trying to hear what I'm telling you all of the blessings can you make it clear right now uh, can you simplify it real quick all of the blessings will come on me oh I did I told you earlier that you have the power and you have the authority. I dare you right now while you're home. I don't care if you're sitting in your favorite chair or what. I dare you to point yourself right now and say, all of the blessings come on me. All of the blessings come on me. All of the blessings come on me. Oh, I need you to lay your hands on yourself. I'm trying to lay your hands on yourself real quick. While you're at home right now, lay your hands on yourself. All of the blessings. Come on me. It's on me. It's on me. The blessings of the Lord are on me. Now, watch this. Watch this. I'm getting ready to point something out and only a few of you will catch it. I took some oil. It's been prayed over and fasted and it's been taken out of the natural. And it's in the spiritual. It's frankincense and myrrh. One day we'll teach on that, but it's frankincense and myrrh. It's known as praying or holy or anointing oil. I took some oil and I rubbed it in my hand. It's on my hand. There's a scent to it. As I rub it over me, I now am contaminated with the smell of that oil. All of the blessings are on me. Tiffany, all of the blessings are on you. All of the blessings of your family is on you. All of the blessings. Now watch this. What do you mean by that? I'm now I'm contaminated. Because of my contamination, whatever touches me is about to be contaminated. See, I to, I, 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 we got to show you how the enemy can take something and make you think something, but we're going to flip it back so I can show you what God means for it. All of the blessings are on me. I know we're practicing social distancing right now, but I know all of the blessings are on me. 
And because of that, those that are in the car with me will be contaminated because the blessing are on. Whatever touches me is about to be blessed. Whatever I touch is about to be blessed. Whatever bumps into me is about to be blessed. I'm contaminated. Oh God, I hear you. I hear you, I hear you. I am anointed. I am anointed. I am anointed. You are 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 anointed. Now I dare you to lay hands on yourself. I am. I am anointed. Last verse, and we get ready to leave out of here. Verse 3 says, You will be blessed in the city. You will be blessed in the city. I'm speaking to you that are looking on right now. I'm not sure if this camera, whichever one, make sure you get close. I need them to see. I'm speaking to you at home right now. And I need you to hear this right now. You may not physically be at New Image right now, but you're still anointed. Y'all ain't. Why am I telling you you're still anointed? Because the scripture says you will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. Meaning that the anointing and blessing that's on my life will follow me so although you can't be here right now miss Shirley you're still anointed although you can't be here right now Derek you're still anointed although you can't be here right now Nicole you're still anointed by the most high you're still anointed brother I'm at home I'm at work at the doctor's office or at the grocery store I'm still blessed I'm still blessed whatever city you're listening from whether it be the big city of Liberty the huge city of Pickens the ginormous city of Six Mile this wonderful city of Easley that big city of Greenville, Anderson, whether you're in Texas, whether you're in Puerto Rico, California, Myrtle Beach, I don't care where you're at right now, I need you to understand that city is blessed now because of your presence. It is blessed, it is blessed. Whatever city you're listening from is blessed right now because of you. The curse itself is being broken right now over that city. I'm declaring over Easley. I'm declaring over Seneca. The buddy I'm declaring over Westminster. I'm declaring all around the world. Clemson. All of the cities that are attached to this house. I'm speaking right now a total healing because you are present there and the anointing of the Most High will rest in that city because you are there. Your city is now blessed because of you. Oh, I'm going to take it a step further. The curse. The curse of this coronavirus is broken right now because of you and the anointing that is on your life is broken it's broken it's broken it's broken it's broken it's broken it's broken city no burglars are coming in your house 
your cars will not be stolen your property will not be vandalized Satan is looking at God he asked have you considered He's walking around y'all know the story Satan's walking around Joey that's two times boy three times I know you he's walking around God said what are you doing he said I'm walking to and fro Pastor Blake seeking whom I may devour God looks at him and he says have you considered New Image Church have you considered Tiffany have you considered Heather have you considered New Image Church and this leadership Satan looks at God when God asks that question Satan says I have but I can't do nothing with them because you got a hedge of protection around them I can't touch them because your arms are around them oh you better give God some praise stuck on a cruise ship you ought to be grateful you could be stuck at some port somewhere you ought to be grateful you could be stuck in St. Francis Hospital you ought to be grateful you ain't stuck at Prisma Health but because of the grace of God I am here because of the grace of God I am protected because of the grace of God I can face tomorrow you're blessed blessed in the city which means your city is protected I'm closing stay soft just like that for me perfect musicians I need y'all to hear me you that are home I need you to hear me close the CDC advises us to run from people who sneeze because they may carry the coronavirus Junior and I went to Zaxby's one night. And I, as soon as I gave the guy my money, he gave me the drink. I felt it coming on. You, you know when you feel that sneeze coming. And I'm like, really, God? This guy already came up to the window with a hazmat suit on. I said, really, God? You're really about to make me sneeze right now. Before I knew it, I couldn't tuck it in. I couldn't do. Junior was in the other seat. I just turned and hot you. I let it rip all on him. That guy closed that window so fast. He stepped back because the CDC advises us that we should run because people may have the coronavirus. It's my understanding that sneezing is the nose involuntary response to a nasal irritation. Again, I need you to hear that. I started to start this sermon with Natalie. I'm going in with Natalie. Again, it is my understanding that sneezing is the nose's involuntary response to a nasal irritation. So when, 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 when someone sneezes, the pressure in their chest increases and it doesn't release until you sneeze giving you the feeling that your heart has stopped beating for just one moment that's that, that I did my research that's what it is so as a result of that when someone sneezes we respond with bless you my sermon topic for the day is bless you because the enemy want us to worry about those that are sneezing instead of blessing those that are sneezing. Wow. Wow. in this time the enemy want us to worry instead of blessing others that are around remember I started out by telling you that uh, uh, even the the, 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 the uh, uh, creatures were blessed to multiply but the creation which is you and I that was made in the image of God was given something a little bit different than the creatures we were given the authority and the power 
So the enemy wants you to think that because they sneeze, you should run. When in all reality, because you're already contaminated, you should bless them. Oh, let me, let me go. Let me go a little bit. The reason why, the reason why the enemy is doing this is because he, under, he, he understands why this even started. The reason you say bless you to that person, you bless them in hopes that the sneezer won't be affected by what's happening inside of their body. So I say bless you, Pastor Blake, because I don't want you to be affected by what's going on on the inside. But if I'm fearful of your sneeze, I run instead of blessing you. And in my running, now I'm leaving you to fend for yourself. And what's inside of you? Oh my, y'all ain't ready for this man. So, when, when they say bless you, it's to block whatever's happening in your body that can lead to death. you sneeze and I say bless you it is to stop whatever is happening that could that possibly could lead to death so right now instead of me blessing the land I'm running because I'm scared back when this happened I, I read that they would declare blessing that they would declare bless you over people that they didn't even know. Have you ever been in a grocery store and don't even know someone and they sneeze? It happens. It's involuntary. Someone sneezes right now before you know it, half of them to bless you. You may not even know who they are. You yell out, bless you. And, and, and again, the enemy wants us to stop doing that. So, so when they started doing it, it was involuntary and it was a way of letting people know you cared so when they blessed you they it was hoping that what was going on inside of you would not have the authority to kill you I, I think I just went a little too deep for some when I bless you Keita I'm taking away the authority of what's happening inside of you from killing you I got two words for you bless you you that are home right now bless you but I'm not sneezing bless you anyhow I'm taking away the authority it does not have the authority the one who is created in his image has the authority oh, God. now now we only have a few people here today but I think we've got enough. I want you to point at someone. I'm pointing at you at home right now. I want you to point at someone real quick. I'm talking about give them that ugly point. I saw something that said because of social distancing that you remember back in the day how they would just throw them. I read something that said because of social distancing that that gun salute's coming back. So, so right now, I don't want you to gun salute, but I want you to point directly at someone. I need you at a home. I'm pointing at you. I'm talking really point at them. Point at them. And I need you to repeat after me as loud as you can. You just got two words. I want you to declare as loud as you can. And Junior, I need you to point at Lady K. I need you to look at her too. You got to speak this in her life, son. I need you. Y'all ready? As loud as you can, I want you to yell. Bless you. One. Good, good, good job, good job, good job. Now let's try that again. I know there's only 10 of us in here. There's only 10 of us in here. But I believe we can say it loud enough where they can feel it at home. On the count of three. One, two, three. Bless you!
talking to them but you are speaking to what's going on around them you ain't speaking to them right they're speaking to the virus that's trying to kill them and you're telling them that bless you you have the power to overcome this thing right now bless you everything that doesn't line up with the will of God we release the anointing of a blessing release the power and the protection of a blessing there are things that haven't even been detected or tested but I believe in my heart by noon mm, look, at, look at what time it is 11.44 I believe in my heart that by noon by noon today the blessings of God will now infuse their bodies I can't say this enough you got the authority so now that you understand because it's 11 44 and i believe that god said by noon so in a few minutes not long from now god's got to go in and do it he can do it just like that but now that you've got the power and the authority and the understanding i need you to point to someone point to two people point to three four i don't care i don't care if you gotta just point to someone and i need you to declare don't wait on me i need you to declare with all power and authority inside of you bless you system bless you i'm speaking to your vital organs right now bless you i'm speaking to your children right now bless you i'm speaking to every person in your house bless you I'm speaking to every person that has illegally touched you bless you and the blessing of god rests upon you speaking to our environment right now and every element of our environment I'm speaking the blessing of God whatever it is that you have touched whatever's been released whatever possibly could have contaminated you with all power and authority to speak the blessing of the most high right now Whatever's been attached to your body, attached to your body, to your family, to your children, your grandchildren, nieces and nephews. I speak over all of you. I speak over New Image Church, all of our partners that are here and those that are viewing online. With all power and authority of his resurrection, resurrected body. I speak the blessing of God over your house that what's going on in this world will not have an effect on your home. That your kids will be blessed. That if there's even a mild case that's already present in or around you, that that simple bless you has stopped the effects of this virus. Yes. This day, with all power and authority, and I call this house blessed. Amen. And if this house is blessed, your house is blessed. This virus will not cripple you. You will not lose anything that you're supposed to keep, and you will gain the promises of God in this hour. You that are home right now, if you're able to stand to your feet. I know it may seem strange to be home and you're standing up and you're listening. But I speak the peace of God over your home. I speak the peace of God over your life. I speak the anointing. I speak that even those kids will come in line this week. Last week was rough, but I speak peace this week. 
I speak to your finances that even in your giving of, of tithe and offering, even in your giving of being a blessing to each other, even in your giving that you will, your meal barrel will never go empty. Every time you reach back, God will meet every need. Speak to your health. And tell it to line up with the word of God. See, the enemy wants us to fight a lip battle with him. But I fight my battle a little bit different. I've learned to knock the enemy out with Genesis to Revelation. He can't touch you if you throw the word at him. So I speak peace, healing, and blessing. Singers, if you're able to, Pastor Blake, I want you guys to, 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 to go back to one of those. I know which one, but I'm going to let you just decide which one you're going. I want you to go back to that song, Singers, if you would come back to the stage. Uh, Miss Jackie, where you at? Miss Jackie's going to come. She's got a little, of a little announcement. Then we're going to sing this song. The benediction for today is you're blessed. That's how we're exiting this place. That's our benediction. You're blessed. Uh, in the way of announcement, there's no service this week. We're going to spend this time with God. We're going to spend this time praying and fasting and seeking God's face. We're going to spend this time just really and truly becoming one with the anointing of God. So there's no service Wednesday night. There's no, uh, uh, I'm canceling all meetings and everything. Um, I know we're frustrated, but I believe God has a greater purpose. Don't worry, next Sunday, we're going to be right back here doing it the same way, bringing God to your home, bringing his power to your home. And I'm believing God that he'll continue to do a great work. As I take my seat and Miss Jackie comes with this announcement, then the praise team sing, I got two final words for you. Bless you. Play my strength in the Lord. Um, if you had plans to participate in any part of today's service, um, the original service that we had planned, I ask that you email me your information, your name, phone number, um, some way to contact you because um, we have some information that we'd like to share with you. Um, the email address that you can contact me at is graham at newimagechurch.com. It's G R A H A M at newimagechurch.com. Thank you.